Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, hope you're having a good morning, if you are based in the UK and around that region, because um, today's a double upload day, and this is video number one, and I'm going to start off with a brief comment about last night, right, Arsenal managed to get through to the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Unbelievable. But it was done in a fashion where penalty shootout against Porto at the depth, literally. Um, and Porto really shut that game down. Even after conceding, they really managed to shut that game down. And you could say, even towards the end of that game, that Porto really should have got something they were lacking that, that edge in the box. If not, they really should have scored. But um, look, at the end of the day, Arsenal managed to get it through, get it across the line, um, and congrats. But now the going is going to get tough. Now this is where you earn your money. Now this is where it gets serious. Uh, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Man City, Barcelona. These are the teams, not Porto anymore. So Arsenal, you better get ready. That's all I'm going to say. This is where it gets really serious. But Arsenal fans can rightfully turn around and go, look, we are in this situation, right? Quarterfinal of the Champions League. We are here. We are here. And that is what you want to be. That is what you want to be doing. Um, I can't really say that for, for us now. Although, although what I will say for Chelsea is... Whenever we're in the Champions League, we're always in the shout of actually winning it. So, look, Arsenal, now is where you earn your money, like I said. Also, can I just say, Pepe is an absolute monster. Pepe is an absolute machine. For 41 years old, he's able to do what he's doing. Is incredible. Yesterday, he was playing like he was 23 years old. I mean, unreal. The flipping... <laughs> I don't have the words to describe... Pepe um, putting on a performance of that magnitude at that age for 120 minutes, I think it deserves so much credit. It deserves so much credit. He was looking like he was 23 years old. I mean, unbelievable. Um, so Pepe, man of the match, without question. Anyway, that's Arsenal and the Champions League yesterday. Let me know your thoughts on that. Today's first video is not really going to be focused too much on news. There is one piece of news and a few comments that I want to focus on. And then Frank Lampard decided to speak and talk about Chelsea as well. So we're going to talk about that. And then later on, it's going to be a lot more news oriented as we see what happens throughout today. So make sure you're there for later on. Make sure you are here for video number two. Let's get cracking with Chelsea want to go and get a left back. This is where we already have a problem. Let's get into it. Fabrizio saying both Chelsea and Manchester United will look for similar players in the summer. Young players, talented and a left back in the summer. There is a concrete chance for Ian Matson to leave. Let's see what also happens with the other left backs at the club. Chelsea, it was quoted, Chelsea want to go in for a left back in the summer. But they want to go and find someone young talented with potential I'm tired guys <laughs> I'm, I'm tired I'm tired man and it's not even just that like on paper that doesn't sound too bad but I've had enough of going in for just potential but we're gonna do that whilst we've got this guy who is still on our books because he's only gone on loan but we're going to get rid of him. Check what. Check out what Ian Matson had to say, because he spoke. Let's see what he's had to say. I see myself as a left back. First of all, I have to make sure that I'm defensively strong. The bonus is I can go forward and play many positions. I feel free. The coach has allowed me to, to be free, but I think left back is my position. So for anyone that was doubting, right, and... This is where we have to look at Pochettino. Pochettino at times was deploying Ian Matson as a left winger, as a right winger and all that. And we were kind of happy to see that. We were like, yo, Ian Matson's got some versatility. He can play in an attacking role. Fantastic. Didn't know that about him because we've always just looked at him as a left back. Well, funnily enough, at times where he couldn't get into the Chelsea team and we were like, what's going on? Why are we playing Ian Matson? Or we're screaming, we're going, we've got a left back here. Why don't we just play him at left back? There were a few people going, no, well, no maybe he's not a left back. Maybe he doesn't want to play left back. 
maybe he wants to be in an attacking role. Maybe that's why Potter's, for the few times he's played him, has played him in an, in an, in an attacking role. And we're like, but he's a left back. If we ain't got anyone else, play him, right? But we didn't. But now we're at a point, we're heading into the summer. We know that Pochettino is going to be leaving. I think that's probably the worst kept secret now. We are going to be looking at another manager. We're going to be bringing someone in. Why are we looking to get rid of Ian Matson if we are going to go in the summer and look for a young, talented, with potential left back? What, what sense does that make? What sense does that make? Well, what about Ian Matson? Some people will probably say, oh, but Ian Matson, no, he doesn't want to be here. He wants to leave. He's not happy. Well, I can understand why, but he wants to leave. Well, let's hear what he's had to say. His words. My plan was to stay at Chelsea. I'd done my loan spells. I thought I was ready to compete for the big clubs, but sometimes football works like this. I didn't get a lot of opportunities. He's not wrong. And he goes on to say more. I had trust at Chelsea, but with the pressure they are under, it is sometimes difficult for a manager to let everyone play, especially young talents with potential. He has to make decisions for the team. You have to deal with it as a young player. Sometimes it's not fair, but maybe it's the best decision for the club and other teammates. I appreciate that, but I want to play football. And that's uh, him at Dortmund now, killing it. I think there's a few underlying things there, right? There's a few... Um, there's a few lines in the sand in that statement that he's made. How it's going to be difficult for the manager to try and just play young players with potential. But that seems to be the model of the football club. I mean, um, I can sympathise with any manager that has to come in and try and find balance between young players and experience. And I get that because we ain't got any experience. So we've had to go to young players, which is why I say that, look, if there's any a time where we're going to be playing players like Ian Matson, it's now. Because we ain't got any other option. So when I look at what he's saying, he wants to be at Chelsea. He, wants, he wanted to stay at Chelsea. He wanted to get a, a breakthrough into the team. He never got one. But now we're going to let him go. And we're going to send him for 30-odd million. And then we're going to go in the summer and buy a young potential left back. Uh, a young, talented left back with potential. Make it make sense. But it does make sense on one level. And this is where I go back to the same point. I have to try and cement this through so people understand. And if you don't see the proof in the pudding with this, you won't see it, right? It's as simple as that. This is glaringly obvious to everyone that understands one plus one is two. Ian Matson is pure profit. Of course he's going to be sold. Of course he's going to be sold. He's pure profit. It's not about wanting a left back. It's about trying to get as much money as we can from the pure profit players. And then we have to go and get the replacement. Who's not going to be pure profit? Who's going to come in on the cheap? Who's going to come on very low wages? Who we can amortise over a certain amount of time? Unlike an Ian Matson, We can't do that. But Ian Matson, we sell tomorrow. We get 30 million. We get 30 million. Pure. Didn't spend a penny on him. And then... We go and we buy some 19-year-old from Argentina, right? Or, I don't know, or Mexico or something, right? And he comes on a salary of 30 grand a week. And, you know, he's a left back with potential. And that's it. Great. We're sorted, guys. That's the problem. Whereas in reality, in reality, we would be keeping Ian Matson and not even looking at anyone else. You want a young left back who's got talent with potential? He's staring at you in the face. Anyway. Now, Frank Lampard has decided to speak. He went on a um, he went on the full unfiltered podcast, right? And he decided to speak about Chelsea and their season so far on the Maurizio Pochettino. This clip, right, I can't play because it's I don't want to be copyrighted, so go and watch it. Um, but he talks about how it's not going to be easy for Pochettino, but I've got to be honest and say everything that he said. It's not going to be easy for Pochettino that for any manager coming in, it's going to be difficult. It's not the case of just change the manager and everything's going to be sorted, right? It's a case where it's difficult for any manager that walks into this job. And he went and identified that it's pretty obvious as to the experience that we lack in this team 
the balance that we don't have, the fact that he was saying players in his time, right? He quoted, he said, I don't like to say, you know, my time in my time, but in my time was, was his words. Um, when there was JT and himself and Didier and Czech and Essien and Ashley Cole and all these guys, uh, young players that were there had something to compete with. They had a level that they had to bring themselves up to if they wanted to stand a chance of getting into the start in 11. Much like prior to that, those same players had players that they had to look up to. And he was saying that it's important for players of a young age to, uh, in a team that have to develop need to have players that they're looking up to, that are setting a standard. And he went and spoke about standards. And he was saying last year how he came in as an interim and he was just going straight on about standards and standards. And he was right. Now, I do believe that on a tactical level, Frank Lampard is, is lacking. I completely believe that. But he's, he's half wrong and half right with what he's saying. Half wrong in terms of like the tactical aspect and whatnot. Because I, like I said, I believe that he's, he's lacking there. But he is right in terms of the lack of the standards and, and doing things to a certain level at the football club. Which is what he was saying back then. And fair play, he was mentioning that. Um... On an interim basis, you've got to understand he had nothing to lose. He's basically saying what he, what he saw. Now, with the lack of experience, the lack of players that these young lads don't have anyone to look up to, right? This is going to completely stagnate their development. We're talking about developing all these young lads. Well, who's, who's going to do it? If these players don't have anyone to look up to, who is setting the standard? Funnily enough, and we've got to be real here, we've got players of a certain age, like Raheem Sterling, who isn't setting a standard. <laughs> and he's meant to be one of the experienced, the, the, the one of few experienced guys that we have. Thiago Silva is completely experienced, but he's 40. You know, he's going to stop playing football tomorrow. But it's just, it's not ideal. You need to have those players that are in and around 28, 29, 30. Sometimes even a little older, a couple of lads that are 31, 32, that have been there, done it, worn the t-shirt, that are sending the levels to the young players trying to get through. We've not done that. We've completely flipped it. And he expressed his concern with that, which I completely agree with. I completely agree. That it's just not feasible. It's just not feasible. I do want to say, in relation to Frank Lampard... I do hope he tries to go in the direction of a director of football. I think he's got a career there. Personally, I think he's got a very good chance of becoming a top director of football. He seems like he's got a know-how in terms of the operations of the football club. He's been there as a player. He's done it. He's worn the t-shirt at the highest level. He knows what it takes for a football club to operate at the highest level. Tactically is where I think his problem is, but a director of football doesn't need to think on that level. This is where I think he's got all the tools to be a top director of football. His analysis is great. He's, he's intelligent. Um, he's very well spoken. Um, he sees things with the bigger picture. I, I honestly think he's got a director of football career if he wants to go in that direction. I think that's waiting for him. So I really, really hope that's what he decides to do. Fingers crossed, um, because I think it would work out pretty well. Um, but it's important to also put out the strategy that the club has gone in. The young players that we've got at the moment, if they were coming into the club in Frank's time, right, they'd be on the bench. Most of them would be on the bench. If, if any of them would actually get into the first team, if any, or maybe ping, pinpoint, maybe um, Cole Palmer might stand a chance, Gusto might stand a chance. Right now, based on how they're playing, mate, even Enzo and Caicedo aren't getting in. It's as simple as that. They're not getting in. So Frank's concerns of the strategy that we've decided to go down and how long this is going to take to get right is completely correct. And this is why now I'm saying it's not going to be all of a sudden change the manager, boom, everything's fixed. It's not. Which is why I'm concerned that even if we get rid of Pochettino, who's the next guy going to be? Definitely going to be the next yes man they can find. My concern is that we're not even going to try and get one of the, you know, a manager that has prowess, that has ability to come in and really do something, at least, at least on an elite level. We're not, we're not targeting those managers. We're not looking in that bracket. So... 
this is why I'm screaming for the fact that we need the club needs to change the direction, but they're not going to. They're not going to. They're not going to. It's 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 money first, and like we expressed with the Ian Matson um, deal that they're looking to get done. Um, their antics are simply screaming for try and find the quick buck wherever we can. So um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on that. Where I want to ask this. How long do you think it's going to take for Chelsea to get back to a respectable level? Let me know your estimations in the comments below. I'm going to give you mine. Personally, the way that we're running right now, minimum, minimum. For us, I'm talking to even start thinking about getting into the conversation for a European spot. Right? When I say European spot, I'm not counting Conference League. Realistically, I'm talking top four, top five here. Yeah, let's say top five. For Chelsea to get into the conversation of getting into the top five, I'm going to say minimum five years. With the way that we're running right now, minimum five years. That's my estimation. Let me know yours. If you agree if it's that or if it's more or if it's less, let me know down below. Much appreciated. And I will catch all of you later on for video number two. So make sure you guys are here for that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. The notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. On top of that, all the socials on screen and in the description to catch more of Eunice Talks Football. And I will catch all of you later on today or tonight for video number two. And we'll round up all the news of today and what has happened. So I'll see all of you then. Thank you all so much for watching. In a bit, people. Take care and peace.